is the Huntley Tribe. So this week, um, well, the month of October, I'm going to be doing, my, me, myself, my husband, are going to be doing real, raw, and uncut series about life, about things that we've been through, about things that we overcame, about things that we're still going through, and we're trying to figure out a way to overcome it. About my testimony, how I overcame homosexuality, how I am delivered and set free from it. Um, it all started out with a seed being planted. And, um, I looked up to them, you know, and they dealt with homosexuality. It was just something, a seed that was just implanted. Yeah. It was just a seed that was implanted. And, um, yeah, like... Everything went downhill from there. I started to just... Well, the spirit that was operating me started to open me up to certain things and um, certain desires and things um, with the characteristics of homosexuality. So it really didn't hit me, and really, I didn't really start operating in it until I was in high school. Um, yeah, I was in high school, and it wasn't that much of a big thing in high school, but as it gradually, you know what I'm saying, like, people gradually start opening up about it. It was just the new norm at my high school around that time. Um... However, my mom, you know, she was still praying for me. She wouldn't want me to wear boy clothes, but I would still sneak and wear boy clothes to school. And, um, yeah, like, I literally started running away, rebelling, and doing things of that nature to basically go against what my mom wanted me to be and what God designed me to be. And I actually started dating girls and getting into like relationships with them and they were very toxic um i would be fighting and just a whole lot of unmotion un unhealthy emotions were being um displayed and um it was like every time i would try to get away from it something always pulled me back but i remember the last time I want to talk about the time before the last time. The time before the last time, I was so, like, I wanted to be sold out for Christ for real. But it was like, it was a stronghold that had a hold of me. And um, it just wouldn't let me go. And I was still fighting and struggling with it because a part of me wanted to let go and then another part of me didn't. Um, I'll never forget, it was two weeks before my dream that I had that God started dealing with me, um, I, um, basically, I was just like, I don't, I was calling one of my guy friends that I used to date back before I started living that lifestyle, and I just wanted to be free, you know, I was something, I don't want to live this lifestyle anymore, and this is that and the third, and I would have fell for the guy, and we would have ended up getting married, and having kids, having a baby, and after I got married and had a baby with him in my dream, um, everything just went downhill. He started beating on me, started locking me and the baby in the house, and I couldn't go anywhere. My family didn't know where I was. It was a whole crazy thing, and I was just like, yeah, I woke up. Like, I'm not going to Miami, so I knew for a fact that I wanted to stop living that lifestyle. Um, I ended up calling my mom, and I was like, Mom... And I come home, and she was like, yeah, so we're both crying. And the next day that I go home, I was like, fire, baptized. Like, people say that you cannot stop sinning in one day. But when I tell you, I stopped smoking in a day. I stopped um, having the urge to be with women in one day. I stopped cussing in one day. I stopped doing a lot of stuff in one day. It's just a one thought that, 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 that you can think of yourself and change who you really want to be. It's all in your mind, you know? So, like, after that, you know, I just was 
full-fledged into Jesus. Everything I did was revolved around Jesus. And it was like I was die hard for Jesus. I'm still sold out for Jesus, but I'm getting to that place. But in a greater, those imaginations will try to come over me and I have to rebuke it and pull it down. And allow God to have his way in my mind, you know. So I would. Um, and then it was a time where I had this when I first got saved, the person that I had just, you know, what I'm saying like. We were broken up for a minute, but this person had to go out of the country. I'm going to tell you how God worked. This person had to leave out of the country, but this person had to leave out of the country. And then, and, and then in order for them, for me to get my breakthrough and me to get my true deliverance, God set it up like that, you know? God will always provide a ram in the bushes. If you take that, if you take that opportunity, that's the only way that he can provide and do what he, you need him to do in your life. So I just want to and people say, oh, you can't be saved. And oh, you can't do one time I had a, this lady was having a debate on with me on Facebook. Once gay, always gay. You know that the devil is a liar. Once you decide in your mind, your conscious mind, your spirit, once your soul all comes in alignment with the Holy Spirit and you say, God, I don't want this no more. God, I don't want to do this no more. God will do that very thing that you need him to do. So with that being said, yes, I'm tatted up. I'm tatted up. But guess what? I'm a God fearing wife. Yes, God, glory. I'm a God feeling fearing wife and a mother. You see one of these little I never thought that I was gonna have this beautiful family that I have. I have four children, two boys and two girls, and a beautiful, handsome, wonderful, loving, tender, meek husband. One of the things that I've been delivered from, you know, but God is good, you know what I'm saying? Um so any person that's dealing with that spirit of homosexuality, the only thing that I can say to you today and give to you today, this nugget is that lifestyle no more. All connection. You cut off all, 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 a person that has access to you that you, you know that pulls at your heart. Cut it off. What, what is the thing? It says, it's, 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 it's a saying that people says, um, if you feed something, it'll continue to grow. But if you stop feeding it, it'll die. So this is what you need to do. Everything that feeds that spirit, I mean, everything that makes that spirit grow, cut it off, stop feeding it, and watch it shiver up and die. So that means you need to get in a Bible-based church, you need to get under a God-fearing man and woman of God that can actually pour into you, that can actually guide and direct you on where to go, because honestly, the only thing I had was God, my, my mom, prayer, and fasting. Fasting is one of the biggest things. That's the only way that most strongholds can be destroyed is if you fast and pray as well as watch. So, make sure you're fasting, you're praying, and you're in your word because that's the only way you can pull down the wicked imaginations of the devil and be able to prosper in the things of God. You have to be able to identify what it is that's holding you back and keeping you. This is just general right there. This nugget that I'm getting ready to drop. Anything that's holding you back, you have to identify the strongest point that's keeping you weak. And once you identify the strongest thing that's keeping you weak, you cut it at the head. And then you get rid of it. How do I do that? I pray. I fast. I cut off every person, everything that's contrary to what I want to do, the good that I want to do, you cut it off. All right? All right, that concludes today's real, raw, and uncut. Yes, sir, we out of here.